Rob, congrats on a fantastic win. Um, you said you wanted to go into this fight and be the hunter, right? So no, that being said, you did just that. Was this how you thought it was going to go? Um, uh, you know, you hope for the best, prepare for the worst, right? I was preparing for an absolute 25-minute slugfest. I was preparing for a war, you know, an abs uh, a dog fight. But um, I told you before, I have the mentality of being the hunter. I want to get in there and I want to stalk my prey. I want to be the predator. And I feel like I accomplished that. I would agree. Um, what does it say, do you think, about you that, you know, you've had a couple of losses, right? And I think in this game, people are quick to just write you off as like, oh, okay, well, he's done now. But the fact that you've been able to persevere and fight your way right back to the top on the cusp of a title shot, what do you think that says about you and your character? Mate, it's never give up. Never, never quit, especially on yourself. <laughs> the fans love and hate them, right? Yeah, I have the best... I, ha I have the best fans in the world. But um, I've seen some fans, the fans for, for, for others, and sometimes they can, they can really just turn a cold shoulder to you real quick um, if you have a bad day or bad night in the office. But that's just the nature of the sport, I guess. But again, I, I say I, I have the best fans in the world. And, um, you know, I know they have never given up faith and they, they, they understand what I can do. And I believe in myself and I have a good people around me. And yeah, it's just striving for greatness. Obviously, when you fought DDP, uh, it didn't go your way. But do you think these last couple of performances have shown that actually that was an off night for you? And if you are at your best, you can beat anybody. Definitely, I'd like to. I'd like to think that. You know, I um, look at the look at the paperwork. Since that fight, I've only improved. I've only gotten better. And yeah, I'm not saying that if I was on, I would have beaten him. I'm not going to take that away from him. He turned up on the night and beat me fair and square, and now he's the world champion because of it, okay? He's a, he's a good fighter, and he, he, he's good at what he does. But I know I can do better. Will I beat him? Like, maybe he gets his hand raised again. But I know I can do better, and I know I didn't put my, my, my best foot forward in that fight, and I want to run it back because of that. It's funny, right, because I feel like for years Israel was the guy you were chasing and wanted to run it back with, and now it seems DDP has sort of overtaken him in the, the hit list. Is that right? Uh, to a degree, like, <laughs> Adesan is still on that list, mate. But, <laughs> but um, I, I honestly feel like... I, see, my goal in martial arts, in mixed martial arts, in combat sports, is to live up to my own potential. That's the only thing I want to achieve because I know how good I am. I'm the most dangerous middleweight on the planet. And everyone knows that. But it's like they're big shoes to fill. And I, I want to live up. That's the only thing I ask for every fight. Every time I step in that octagon, it's just to, to allow me to do what I train, to, to, to live up to my own potential. And uh, tonight, I feel like I did that. And yeah. Uh, they've obviously asked you about being a backup. Dana was here and said he'd love you to be a backup if you were open to it. Are you, is that the only way that you'd fight on that Perth card? Or if they came with a good opponent, do you see yourself maybe fighting just because it's on home soil? You know, it's on home soil. I, I plan to be there one way or another, okay? But um, I do need to go back to, to talk to my team. Um, yeah, I, I need to talk to my team about it. We've got to work on the other guys that are preparing. Like, I took this fight short notice and kind of pushed a lot of things around. So I want to, I want to go back and talk to my team. Perth is just, it's in my home turf, you know, but... Yeah, let me talk to my team. Last one for me. Hamzat says that you and his business is not finished. I'm sure he would love to see this fight rebooked. Is that something you'd be okay with? Or are you sort of thinking, well, you did have your shot and you didn't make it? <laughs> Mate, I, don't jump me as soon as I finish a fight. <laughs> I don't know why people do that. I think I say that, but I probably did it once or twice as well. Like, let me have this for a little bit, all right? We can, we can settle the score another day. Congrats, man. Uh, hello, Aisha Fate from Arab News. First of all, congratulations on the win. Um, you were set to fight um, Hamza first, but um, he withdrew last minute. Uh, how did you stay focused and adaptable with the unexpected change uh, in opponents? Uh, determination, doggedness, you know, a great team. My team kept me switched on, they kept me focused. Um, they understood how dangerous Ikram was if I didn't take it with the respect it deserves. I told myself that because of them. And I just, I just stayed focused, like, like a dog on a bone. Uh, you mentioned that you were preparing for a long fight, for a slug fest, as you said. Mm. Were you taking uh, this uh, preparation for Hamzat fight uh, more serious than other fights before? Um, 
not more serious. I take every fight deadly serious, but like the, the camps they vary. Um, because this camp rolled off the back of the Costa fight, I was able to reach much higher levels of training and preparation. I was fitter, I was leaner, I was stronger going into it, into this camp. So I was able to push more. Everyone in the gym knows if, you, if I go to a session, you're getting 100% out of me. And if the foundations are greater, then 100% is a bigger number when I'm you know, in, in better shape. What would you say Ikram did wrong in, in the fight with you and did he make any mistake when you caught him? Um, I'm not going to disrespect him by trying to point out what he did right or wrong. He, he took a hard fight against a hard opponent. I'm ranked third in the world. I was the middleweight champion and I've said it a hundred times since the win. I'm the most dangerous middleweight in the world. Uh, what about Shara? Did you see his fight tonight and what do you think of him as a possible opponent? I did. Um, <laughs> The, the guy he fought was tired, man. <laughs> he was very tired. That's uh, not taking any away from, anything away from Shara. I think like the way he utilized his kicks, the way he stayed focused, and the way he danced on the outside, avoided the dangerous, uh, the dangers of the what half the first round. Um, yeah, it was admirable. But yeah, the the guy the guy he fought was tired. A few years ago, when you were fighting at the same card with Hamzat in Abu Dhabi, I asked you, uh, do you possibly see him as a future opponent? And you said, oh, I wish he's going to stay at welterweight, yeah. if you remember this. So now I'm asking you about Shara Bullet. Is it possible that in a few years you will have to fight him? Mate, I'm at the top of the ladder. I fight everyone. I fought everyone. There isn't anybody that I haven't fought. Only only stripes, only shot and get there, you know, like I, I've never picked or danced away from any opponents and um, if our paths cross, they cross, we're both in this sport together, right, we're both middleweights. Uh, Shara spoke very respectfully about you, he said if, we, if I would fight Robert, it would have to be like a title fight somewhere after like a number of fights in UFC, what would you make of his words? I appreciate the respect he's given me and um, yeah, you know, it's, it's nice. Now I like him a little bit more. <laughs> you know, I try not to like any middleweight because I have, there might be opponents, potential opponents. But I'm respectful to all the middleweights because honestly, only the other middleweights understand what we go through, understand the heart and the, the, the sacrifice and the determination you need to succeed in this sport. So they, they're the most, they have the most respect from me as much as I try to not like them, right? And um, he's doing his thing. He had a good win tonight. I want him. I wish him the best. You know. And like I said, if our paths cross one day, they cross. Maybe, maybe not. If you face Shara, would you uh, rather wrestle him or <coughs> outstrike him? In your opinion? Uh, wrestle. I reckon. Let's give that a go. <laughs> hey, Today, Robert, uh, Ikram fight lasted nearly two minutes. Uh, what if you fight Hamza Chumayev? How long it would last? Mate, who knows? What do you, what do you want me to say? What are, you, <laughs> what are you guys trying to get out of me? <laughs> but I prepared for a dogfight. You have no idea how hard I trained, how many rounds of work I had to put in to, to, to prepare adequately for this fight. I, it finished early. Everything went to plan. Everything that we trained for, I executed perfectly to a degree. And... Like, I am so thankful for that. But I was prepared to fight tooth and nail for 25 minutes. An absolute dogfight. I was willing to leave that octagon carried if I had to. You, that's the sort of fight I was, I was turned up for with Shemaev. And Ikram inherited that. That's the sort of fight I, I came here for. Wow. So, Robert. So, Dana said he likes uh, the idea of you being the backup fight for the Perth. And if that doesn't work out, would you be willing to sit out for, for, and wait for a while? Or would you be okay to fight one of those top, top guys like Sean Strickland or maybe Hamzat fight again? Yeah, I, I only fight the best. That's, that's what I've earned. That's what I do. Um, I fight the best. My, my priorities is to get back home and see my family. Two weeks is too long. <laughs> so I'm going to go home and I'm going to spend time with my family. 
Told him I'd take him to the Gold Coast. So that's where we have to go, all right? But um, I'm going to sit down with my team before we leave and I'm going to organise what, what we're doing and, and how things play out. Like I said, I'm not the only one in the team and I moved a lot of people's timelines and plans around taking a fight so short after Costa because it's not just me that has to make the sacrifices, it's my coaching staff and teammates as well. And uh, I wouldn't be here without them, so it, I, I need to, to get home and talk to them. Sorry if I'm coming across angry. <laughs> I, do, I get yeah, teed up sometimes. <laughs> Robert, можно вопрос? Переведи, пожалуйста, друг. Uh, yeah, да. uh, безусловно, ты величайший спортсмен, uh, но uh, отчасти ты счастливый сейчас сидишь здесь. Uh, счит... Ты рад, то, что твой бой с Хамзатом Чимаевым отменился? Ведь, возможно, в случае, если этот бой состоялось бы, то ты бы не сидел бы тут Obviously, you're a great fighter, one of the greatest. But uh, how do you see this whole situation playing out for you? If not for Hamzat fight uh, being cancelled, probably things would play differently. You would have to fight five rounds. You could possibly lose. Are you happy how things played out? And now you had a really quick, quick victory. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, if I had wheels, I'd be a bike, am I right? Like, it is what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, mate, what if I ordered scrambled eggs instead of waffles this morning? I don't know, I don't know. I, I understand Chamayev's a hard fight, but I, I didn't shirk it. I, didn't, I did not say yes to fight him, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to respond properly to that. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>